Greetings, what is up and a very warm welcome to the channel. The sun is hiding and the magpie is casting. Coming to you guys right now with a live one versus one, fresh from the ladder on this, what is it now, Sunday the 17th of November. Now this is World Championship Sunday, so um, there is a very good chance that this is a World Championship game. So I just thought I'd throw that in there before I start before I start this cast, because uh, if you're trying to avoid spoilers for the World Championship series, if you want to go back and watch the VODs on Twitch or whatever in your own time, you might want to skip this game. Um, I, myself, my, I myself will be going back and watching the... Uh, the, uh, the World Championship uh, games myself, uh, but I just got home and it's been ages since I cast and I finally got a moment here to get some casting in, so I was just like, quick, 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 get, get the cast going. Um, but yeah, I, I think this probably is a World Championship game, so uh, spawning in the south on Crossroads, playing as the Vermac pieces, it's going to be Findeed. And playing in the north, spawning as the Soviet pieces, it's going to be Major Kusanagi. Um, so... Uh, yeah, based on the timing and the fact that the relic twitches up with um, over a thousand viewers and um, and the number of observers in this game, I'm pretty sure that this is a World Championship Series game. Um, but uh, from our point of view right here on my channel and from my point of view right here as a caster, that's fantastic because it means that these two players will be playing their hearts out, representing the very top level of skill in the game. This is the final weekend, I believe, of the World Championship Series, so this is going to be a very... and it's Sunday, so this is Championship Sunday, so there's every chance that this is a semi-final or finals game. I, I, I'm not actually sure, but really looking forward to seeing... Uh, to seeing this uh, this high level play. Um, my apologies, of course, for not being around over the last week. Uh, you'll have noticed, of course, that there have not been any uploads. I have not had any time to cast. It has been a hell of a week. Um, I've been very busy with a lot of things, and um, sadly, that means that uh, casting is basically always the first thing to take a hit because it's less important than keeping myself alive and doing work and all that stuff, sadly. Um, but uh, I'm hoping that next week I'm going to have some more time and uh, to spend around the channel and uh, and bringing casts to you. Hang on a second now. It's probably time to start talking about the game. The initial engagements, as you can hear, are underway here. We've got Conscripts pinned down by an MG42. Looks like both players so far so standard. Uh, Findy going for Grenadiers with MG42 in support, which we're very used to seeing against Soviets. And it looks like uh, Kusanagi going for Quad Conscripts. So far, no tech. Let's have a look at Kusanagi's options here. Urban Defense Tactics. Uh, is a pretty good one to be going for. It does enable you to play techless for a little longer than, than usual because uh, you get access to the light AT gun and shock troops to bolster your roster. Uh, let's see now, we've got guard rifle combined arms tactics here. Uh, that's an ML20 commander which is really useful on small maps such as this one because the ML20 basically has the range of the entire map. Crossroads of course, not a big one. And we've got shock rifle frontline tactics, that's an IS2 commander. Uh, gives you some other very useful abilities as well. But based on this roster, I'm guessing, unless it's going to be urban defense, that we will see a tech choice taken momentarily here. We'll see, we'll see. Findeed looks like he's rock rocking with the Spearhead Doctrine, the Lightning War Doctrine. Sorry, it's Jaeger Infantry, my bad. And the, the New Geezer, Strategic Reserves Doctrine. So, um, yeah, pretty well-rounded uh, list of uh, commanders there. Uh, good odds of seeing a Tiger in this game if the game goes on long enough. Uh, wow, this MG42 has been putting in work, getting the first star of veterancy up in the game, has been thundering away now for about the last minute worth of, uh, worth of play. How much veterancy? Yeah. Looking pretty sharp, that MG42, and it's actually enabling these Grenadiers to to uh, spearhead an assault up into the Soviet side of the map here. They're going to be getting up on top of this ch this cutoff point if uh, if Kusanagi is not able to hold this location. This is actually, what, seven or six now Grenadiers against uh, just four conscripts. Additional reinforcements are coming in now. Finally, one of the squads of Grenadiers is forced back, but now the MG42 has had time to reposition. Going to fall that one back, though. Conscripts uh, getting a flank on this MG going to force that on back he he'll be unlucky to lose this mg here it's definitely going to get away nicely done there and uh, yeah a punchy opening here for findeed i like what i see he's definitely taking fights on the field but uh, as you can see on the mini map uh, you know i'm going to crack the tech here momentarily uh, we can already see uh, Kusanagi has had uh, double fuel connected with double VP. So for all these fights looking pretty strong right here for Findeed, the actual winner right now is definitely Kusanagi. Getting ahead in VP, getting ahead in uh, in fuel income massively. And of course, that's going to be the most critical thing. Findeed's going to go ahead and choose a commander right now. So we've got the, um, what was it? Strategic Reserves Doctrine. Assault Grenadiers being thrown into the mix as well. Look how hard these players are just going for it, by the way. This is like super grindy dare I say sweaty, both of these players definitely wiping, 
moisture off their brow. This is some intense gameplay right here. Neither player dropping a squad or really making any errors here. Assault Grenadiers going to make themselves felt here as they uh, enter the fray, policing these uh, conscripts back, preventing the Soviet forces from overrunning or pursuing retreating Axis units or really getting into the other half of the map. But still, Kusanagi just buying time here. Looks like it's going to be a support weapon camp and I attack here for Soviet player. So uh, I wouldn't hate a Maxim right now. I wouldn't hate a Mortar. Both of those would be fine. I think probably the Maxim, the stronger choice, but uh, we'll see. <coughs> we'll see. Uh, so let's see. Uh, no Battle Phase 2 just yet. We've got the Medic Bunker on its way here. Finally gets the cutoff uh, decapped here. Does Findeed, so that's going to do something to address this horrendous resource imbalance that has been going on in this game. Wow, yeah, look at that. That is a relatively quick tank of E Battalion Command, and uh, we nearly got T-70 fuel. We're about, what, 30, 27 off. So, yeah, could have a light tank here on the field, or Major Kusanagi could elect to save. We'll see what happens here. Um, Findeed is probably going to be required to choose a pack gun in order to not die to a T-70 as we move on in this game. <clears throat> All right, we've got a moment of quiet here, so let's crack the tack, and we can see where these two high-level players are opting to route their forces and allocate their uh, allocate their troops about the map. Grenadier is going to be grabbing a much-needed fuel point over here in the west. MG42 still thundering away over here. Assault Grenadier is going to be doing their best to deny this central structure. Also getting some inf useful information about where the uh, where the conscript squads are right now as well. Just momentarily hopping in that building. We'll have given them some line of sight there, which will be interesting. And now Major Kusanagi, it's fair to say, position is getting compacted. These conscripts are beginning to struggle now. Uh, this is a relatively unsophisticated Soviet army, which is fighting into the face of an MG, some flamethrower pioneers, assault grenadiers. There's just more moves to be made with this uh, Axis army right now. It just has more capability. Um, and... Oh, for, so, sorry, for a second there, I thought that was a squad wipe. It isn't. Um, so it looks like Life the Mechanized Company has finished. 222 Scout Car going to be the choice here for Findeed. Um, Crossroads is just one of those maps where 222s tend to be really good, I have to say. Um, I've been beaten so many times by 222s on this map. Um, so... Yep. <clears throat> T-70 going to be the choice here for Kusanagi. So a super standard game, really. I mean, apart from the Assault Grenadiers, uh, which we're not super used to seeing. Uh, these conscripts are really low, falling back in negative cover. Assault Grenadiers on the pursuit. The Flammenwerfer is going to get one more shot in here, but that conscript escapes with at least at least two pixels there, so not in danger of a squad wipe. Have to feel Kusanagi getting a bit lucky with the rolls, uh, the, the hit rolls on that falling back squad there. Going to survive for now. 2-2-2 on the field, though. If this 2-2-2 was like seven seconds earlier or something, it probably would have gotten the kill on that squad. But this this is tough times now for the Soviet player. Kusanagi still on just four conscripts and these engineers. The T-70 is going to enter the field momentarily, but it's not here right now. And this is a meat grinder that the Axis player has set up. LMG-42 has now popped up on one of these Grenadier squads, so that one's hooning away out of this building here. And uh, conscripts, though. Sneaky conscripts out in the west. Going to grab that fuel back. So, you know, not um, <clears throat> by no means defeated is Kusanagi, but really feeling the pressure of a much more sophisticated and capable Axis roster. T-70, though, is here now, and that's going to go quite a long way to redressing the balance of power assuming it doesn't just kind of get squandered or destroyed by an unlucky turn of events uh, has to be careful with this T-70 if it gets fausted, could be problems no pack gun on the roster just yet and Findy electing not to buy one confident to deal with this T-70 using just Fausts and a 2-2-2, okay here comes the pack gun there we go, alright uh yeah, it is like turbo ballsy to the point of being stupid, I think, not to buy a pack gun around about this time in the game. I think Findy just fine delaying the pack guns this time because he had the 222 and had good field control and has good Faust options, so can definitely like manage the T70. But now that the T70 is here, the pack gun does make sense. Of course, the pack gun scales pretty well into the late game as well. Uh, so this is around about the timing. You want to add that pack gun onto your roster. And um, Findy not going to be bucking the trend, is going to be making the sensible choice. <clears throat> as we've seen him... <coughs> Pardon me. As we've seen him do all games so far, um, this is definitely a sensible way of playing Axis forces. We've seen nothing risky. We've seen nothing um, super aggro or cheesy. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is that's why this has been such a stable, uh, very sort of representative of the meta style from both of these players. Kusanagi is going to go ahead and choose a commander, and it is going to be the NKVD, uh, sorry, the um, shock rifle frontline tactics. Um, so, yeah, KV-8 flamethrower tanks will be an option moving forwards, and... Uh, Shock troops are an option right now. So that's an IS-2 commander. And I suppose 
Yeah. I mean, so Kusanagi knows that Findeed has gone for, what is it again? Strategic Reserves Doctrine. One of these days I'll remember. Um, so picking this commander as a counter pick here. Just interesting to note. Uh, wow, massive fight coming down here. A lot of units from both forces engaged here. MG42 hooning in from a marvelous position. The, t the 222, the pack gun. It just everything coming together nicely for the Axis player. The Soviet forces struggling to find any real way in here. The T-70 is safe as long as it doesn't come past this line here. Uh, oh no, wait, sorry, no. Oh, I thought the pack gun was back here. No, 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 the T-70 takes a slug from a pack gun. Grenadiers looking for a Faust here. They're not going to get it. The T-70 is going to strafe past the Axis line and now escape here. 222 looking for some pursuit shots. The pack gun also repositioning, but the, two, the T70, a slippery target, gonna get away for now using the cover of this building. That is nicely done. Somehow though, despite taking a fight that looked fairly disastrous, Kusanagi pushing the flanks like a champ, maintaining control over two VPs, maintaining control over both fuel is critical. So again, despite taking a pretty sweet engagement, I mean, all of the Axis units were correctly positioned and taking positive engagements there you know the mg42 well set up the 222 at the back contributing damage grenadiers in nice positions you know conscripts were going down and you know this position was not broken by kusanagi but that's fine because the real story is kusanagi pushing the flanks so that's great um these two players seemingly super evenly matched this is a really good game so far no mistakes being made both players operating correctly t70 getting spanked back there i believe by a pack gun round or something has to fall back to repair so that one won't be available for a little while demo charge coming down on the central building so we could see some big old booms here and possibly a dead grenadier squad or something like that we're gonna have to see uh <clears throat> looks like axis forces though making a big land grab in the west and that's crucial even gonna go straight for the cutoff a lot of conscripts here Want to have uh, something to say about that, though. That is a lot of conscripts. Whoa. Um, so they're going to come stacking on out here. Man, look at these cheeky cheeky engineers pushing so far into the uh, Axis half of the map. I imagine they're going to fall back to base and probably construct the mechanized Campanile. Uh, so, of note is that actually Findy does not have a metal detector. So, oh, that was a rifle grenade. Does find some conscripts. Uh, but yeah no metal detector so this demo charge could be issues we'll see 222 gonna come forward conscripts in danger of being wiped here nope uh, the uh, lmg 42 grenadiers have to fall back and without their dps there's no chance of a wipe there it would have been a lucky wipe but it was possible okay hang on there 222 get a little bit close to the old demo charge there tank buster grenade comes down off of some conscripts these conscripts now need to fall back they are horribly suppressed T-70 now repaired, coming on in, actually looking to get up on top of the of the pack gun. This is issues now, but it's going to get Fausted, so this could be a dead T-70. Dong, there goes the Faust. He's going to trade it or attempt to trade it for the uh, 222. That's the incendiary artillery going to come down here. That's going to prevent the pack gun for now from taking any shots. Gets the uh, 222 very nicely. If he can get out with this T-70 somehow, he will be lucky to do so. We're going to have another Faust off of these Grenadiers momentarily. The pack gun here is going to find the T-70 in its arc. Going to set that one up here. That should be a dead T-70. No two ways about it. Donk. And now the Faust to finish it. Uh, so I'm not sure what I make about this, actually. To be honest, trading out the uh, T-70 for a 222. Uh, trading out a T-70 and an incendiary barrage, actually, for a 222. Seems a little bit of an overextension, if I'm honest. I think I prefer keeping the T-70 alive in this roster. Um, and now, if your opponent constructs another 222, I feel like you need to buy a Zis gun or something. I don't know. An interesting exchange there by Kusanagi. I wonder if that was the plan all along. It certainly looked like the plan. Kusanagi seemed to go into that fully, like... I just don't think that that T-70 was ever getting out of there, so I think Kusanagi was making the choice there to trade the T-70 for the 222, which... I don't know. I'm just not sure that I agree with that. Uh, but anyway, let's crack the attack and we can see all Axis units have been retreated back to the base. They need a second here to reinforce rearm. Shock troops carrying them back. So shock troops on the roster have been for some time now, actually. Um... <clears throat> But we can now see the minimap turning red despite heroic engagements. I have to say, I've not disagreed with any of these fights that Findeed has been taking. Like, they've all looked really good, to be honest. Um, but it's Kusanagi who has, like, had the majority of fuel control and had the majority of VP control. Now, the score line is close. 379 for Findeed, under 400 for Kusanagi. Um, 
But the resource differential has just been pretty savage. Now let's check the tech. Okay, so Battle Phase 2 is complete, and we're actually going to see a support armor core. Okay. So it looks like Findeed uh, recognizing, perhaps, that, um, that, that they've had the underdog fuel income, and therefore... So, I mean, when, when you recognize you're the underdog in terms of fuel income, you have two choices, don't you? You can either save hard and dig in and admit that this is going to be a really hard game, but you're still going to save for your tiger. Or you can admit that you just are not going to have the... You're going to die before you get to the tiger, you know. And so you'd rather spend the little fuel that you will have. So you're going to go for the sport armor core, which is a cheaper tech building, and then take a, cheap, a cheaper tank choice out of that building. I think I like this choice better. We've oftentimes seen Axis players die with, like, 210 fuel in the bank, like, saving for that tiger and just being broken just before you just before you get it. Um, it's a difficult... You, you're signing up for, like, hard difficulty if you say to yourself, I'm in the underdog position and I'm still going to save for a tiger. That's tough. That is tough to do. At least in an even game, that's a respectable choice. But you have to... It's just very difficult when you're behind in fuel income. And Findy is still does not have a fuel right now these grenadiers are going to get up on top of this fuel point as soon as they as soon as findeed realizes they're not capping here there are, there are mines here as well actually uh so kusanagi is just putting together a really good showcase of soviet play here i've got to say oftentimes as the soviet player especially on small maps like this where the axis player will have most of their units in all of the big fights it's actually really hard to take a big fight axis units are really good and vermac units particularly fight really well together like they 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 are force multipliers to pliers to each other, like more so than most other factions, just because of the way Vermax is designed. They 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 adjust they they just they just just take my word for it. I don't have time to explain it right now. Um, but yeah, despite not conclusively taking any of the big fights, really, like Kusanagi has done such a good job of just being active on the map. And whenever whenever the Axis player has to fall back with all of their units, because even if you don't lose a big fight, eventually your units are going to be damaged and bruised and need to fall back. And whenever Findy falls back a substantial amount of their forces, Kusanagi is pressuring in, harrying with shock troops, pressuring, getting into the, the southern side of the map and uh, making Findy's life as difficult as possible. So, yeah, my hat goes off to Kusanagi. This is a really good Soviet game that we're seeing here. Uh, but right now... Findy is taking some fights. Had There was a moment there where Findy almost had a triple cap. <clears throat> and Findy's going to grab this fuel point. Loses the west of the map, though, so it's back and forth. This is grindy as hell. Neither player taking a clear-cut advantage, but, you know, I have to give the edge to Kusanagi right now just because this fuel income is going to be so telling. And we're at the stage now where we're so far away from an Tiger or a meaningful anti-IS2 choice from Findy, but we're actually very close to an IS2. And obviously that's very scary because this IS-2 is going to be very difficult for Findy to manage for some time now. So it's going to be a Panzer IV. Panzer IV is a great medium tank, obviously. Um, but, oh, uh, it's a oh, nice rifle grenade. Um, but, yeah, Panzer IV is a great medium tank. But when your opponent is on track for like an 18 or 19 minute IS-2 just because they've had such good fuel domination in this game... You know, this Panzer IV is going to have a really hard time. Now, it is supported by three Fausting squads and a Pack 40. So, the ingredients are here. You know, in an ideal world, th this IS-2 could definitely be taken out with these units. Uh, and, and even just in a reasonable world, this IS-2 can be managed with these units. But this is breaking point for Findeed. It will not take much to go wrong for this IS-2 to snowball if the Panzer IV is caught out and destroyed before it's had a chance to really pay for itself or have any meaningful impact on the battlefield this game's going to be incredibly difficult or maybe even over uh if the pack 40 gets wiped and then the is2 is able to overrun and take out another squad or, or just you know snowball for more damage then the game's going to get very hard if not impossible and if the is2 is just able to consistently rinse for value and the is2's main gun is so potent and explosive sometimes when you're playing with very fragile four-man grenadier squads it's very easy for in the in the heat of a fight for this IS-2 to just get a squad wipe. This is a really nasty unit for Vermax infantry to have to deal with. So, um, yeah, this IS-2 represents a massive threat right now, and Findeed would definitely like to have been better set up or had more time in this game before the IS-2 came out. But you know, Kusanagi's fuel control has been so good that we find ourselves in this situation. This is like a 19-minute IS-2. This is scary. So, yeah, we're going to have to see. Another pack gun is going to be the adaptation Findeed feels is required. And I do agree that this is definitely going to help. This um, means two pack guns can chip down on IS-2, a VET-0 IS-2, pretty quickly. Uh, so if you get a Faust and break the engine, and the IS-2 is exposed in an area where both of the pack guns can be hitting it, um, then, yeah, this, 
the, there are definitely chances here for Findy to take this one out. Donk, good minds there onto the Panzer IV. That's annoying if you're Findy. Um, IS-2 is taking up position in middle of the map, just doing damage. No Dansac upgrade. Okay, here comes the Dansac. Um, so, oh my goodness, did that really just happen? See, this is what I mean about the IS-2. It has literally very explosive potential for squad wipes. But you know what? Speaking of squad wipes, a conscript squad has died. I missed that. But a conscript squad has died. So the Soviet infantry roster right now somewhat depleted. My god, look at Kusanagi push, though. Just coming on in here. Being so aggressive. Senses blood in the water right now. Flammenwerfer gets up on top of one of the pack guns. Where's the other one? So the other one's nicely set up, taking shots into the IS-2. Conscripts are in the hood, though. Seven-man conscripts. They could maybe push up on top of this. Engineers, pioneers, sorry, getting hung out to dry, and they will go down. So does the pack gun. Kusanagi breaking through a stricken Panzer IV and an exposed pack gun right now. The only thing standing between Kusanagi and, like, domination right now. Ugh, this is a horrendous battle, but do you know what, though? I don't know, man. Kusanagi's forces are now overexerted and having to fall back. And this is a small Soviet roster. Yeah, the IS-2 is scary, but the, the, the Axis player, you know, remanning the, the pack gun, that's fine. Uh, the Axis player is super not out of this. Findeed has a lot of options. This has definitely been a bad start. But even given that this is a 19-minute IS-2 game, <clears throat> Findeed is doing pretty okay having whittled down the the infantry roster. So Kusanagi is going to have to focus on replacing these squads. Uh, at least the shock troops have survived. That is crucial. Shock troops and three squads of conscripts is fine, but if Kusanagi starts losing any any of these four squads, the conscripts or the um, shock troops, that's danger time. Lost an engineer squad in that last fight, but that's okay. As I often say about Soviets, the engineers are always the most ablative squad, like the squad that you're the most okay with losing, so... Yeah, that's fine. We can lose engineers. They're only 200 manpower. Uh, plus any upgrade they may have had in munitions. But I mean, that's fine. You can lose that squad. What a game. This has been a good one. We can only imagine that there are literally thousands of dollars at stake on this one as well. So, excitement. I love it. Shock Troops making a deep run here. Pushing back some... Uh, some grenadiers, but they will get exposed here. MG42, Anna Panzer IV, sluggish on the fallback here is Kusanagi. Oh my god, and the squad gets a little bit confused there with one model getting trapped off to the wrong side of this barn. Panzer IV here with a potential kill shot. Gonna miss it. That would have been super lucky if the shell had placed perfectly in between these two falling back models. It may have wiped them, but that is like very unlikely. Okay, so T34 getting added in. I like this T34. This is going to make it much easier for these pack guns to be taken out in a fight because the pack guns will be positioning to deal with the IS-2. And then the T-34 can come in for the flank. Kusanagi applying the pressure with the triple cap here. There's one squad of grenadiers active on the map. Apart from that, everything's tied up in this big fight on the main front here. Um, so, yeah, and this T-34 also obviously can set up for a ram on the Panzer IV, which is a way of dealing with that tank. Uh, whoa, this IS-2 is just being so ballsy, feeling like it can just come into the teeth of the pack guns and the Panzer IV. Wow. And, I mean, Kusanagi is not wrong, but, I mean, that takes some real skill and judgment to make that call. How many players there would have been like, whoa, that's a lot of, that's three anti-tank barrels pointed at my IS-2. Maybe I just want to play this one a bit cautious. Not Kusanagi. Coming straight in there. Conscripts here in support. MG-42 suppressing a lot of units. Going to wipe out those engineers. This this MG-42 has been, like, unit of the match here for, this, for the Axis player. It's been so good. Three stars of veterancy, plenty of kills, but, crucially, many battles turned on the work of this uh, heavy machine gun team. So here comes the T-34. Angling in. May go for the ram. Doesn't decide to. Okay, yeah, that would have been an ambitious ram. The two pack guns are still lurking just to the south here, so that would have been an insty-dead T-34. Kusanagi, again, demonstrating just fantastic judgment. Going to come on in here. Going to whittle some more damage in here. IS-2 as well, just un just fearlessly coming forward. These two tanks not really supported by very much infantry right now. Kusanagi's uh, manpower being drained, having to repair... Oh, sorry, replace these engineers again. Which you basically have to do. As soon as you have one IS-2 or just two or more Soviet tanks. You re you need two engineer squads. Engineers repair so horribly, measly, slowly. You just need two of them or else your armor is going to be so inefficient. So anyway, these Grenadiers have grabbed one of the VPs. They're going to grab this uh, fuel point over here. So that's awesome. It looks like as well, Findeed maintaining control over this victory point is super useful because down at 214 under 354 against a predatory Soviet player right now, a Soviet player who is prowling for damage, who is prowling to exploit the underdog Axis player in this game. And again, Findy totally not dead. This is a fine army. Look in the top left. This army is like pretty good, pretty healthy. It's a well-rounded rifle grenade. It's a well-rounded roster. 
Okay, you got to get these shock troops out of here, Kusanagi. This is like horrible. They're getting... Oh, God. Kusanagi, please. There we go. Um, yeah, this Axis army is okay. If, if Findy can hold on... You know, we're not that far away from Tiger now. 142 fuel and, and stacking. Uh, so... What is this camo, by the way? I feel like I've never seen it before. It's wicked. Grenadiers in a bad way here. IS-2 spread being a little bit unlucky there. One star veteran scene now done. Unlocks the fragmentation shell. This MG-42 just getting smoked down by heavy tanks here. Two pack guns though. Making this IS-2 look a bit foolish for having over encroached here. Conscript's also going to get pushed back. Oof. Faust is going to connect onto this uh, T-34 here. And uh, the IS-2 can't really support. The two pack guns and the Panzer IV are available here to possibly stalk down the Soviet medium. This is problems. Okay, looks like the T-34 is going to escape. The IS-2 is going to find a flanking shot here. Misses. Oh, and the pack guns now. They're, they're starting to vet up these pack guns. So... Kusanagi has to be careful. Findeed has the munitions for the stun shot. Double stun shot. And uh, on the next Star of Veterancy, is that when they get increased penetration? Yeah. Sorry, it's rate of fire. Okay. But that's still dangerous. Very dangerous. Panzervoir here just shoving this uh, allied infantry around. They're going to have to fall back. Bit of a hopeful rifle grenade there. They're going to miss. Frag grenade connects onto one of these pack guns. Looks like the shock troops wanted to stay around for the for the kill. But that might have been an overextension here. They're so weak. LMG-42 here. Yeah, Panzer IV going to get him. And that's a loss that Kusanagi cannot afford to replace. Literally, cannot afford to replace. That was, an, that, was, that, was a, that was a crucial blow. That's how the Axis player wins this game. By just taxing the Soviet player's already heavily depleted infantry roster. So... Honestly, I think if I'm Kusanagi, I think I think I like another conscript squad best. Like, I think you just need bodies on the field now. You don't really need them to be very elite bodies. Yeah, shock troops are nice, and we just saw, saw that. Yeah, you can use shock troops to push up on top of pack guns, but I they're just not essential. I just think you need more bodies on the field right here. Careful there, Jesus! That rifle grenade getting very close to the demo charge. This T-34 finding some sweet angles to harass the Axis weapon teams here. Meanwhile, it seems like over in the west, uh, some Grenadiers going to get pushed out. Seven-man conscript squads, of course. Pretty good. IS-2 being repaired. All right. Well, I mean, okay. So, Findeed has kind of navigated this game into... Whoa, we're going for another T-34? Uh, that's a risky move, but I kind of think I like it. I mean, so the plan here for the Soviet player is definitely just snowball Kusanagi under a tidal wave of allied armor. But you know what? I think Kusanagi has kind of misjudged the timing here. I, There is not a window of time where you're going to be able to exploit two T-34s and an IS-2 without Tiger support. Because by the time this, this T-34 is here, the Tiger will also be here. So I, I actually think Kusanagi is... Um, it's very hard to judge, of course. If you're Kusanagi, you can't possibly know exactly how much fuel the Axis player has. But, you know, we as observers can see that this second T-34 is actually going to be going up against a Tiger... Um, there was a stack of fuel left over here, so I think I prefer, like, um, a, uh, an SU-85 or just, yeah, I, th I think I prefer that. I, I, I get the thinking behind the T-34 because you're on the verge of breaking Findeed here, but there's just going to be no window of time for this for these units to try and break Findeed because the Tiger's going to be here momentarily. How much does the Tiger Ace cost? Jesus, 250. All right. All right, now Soviet forces are trying to push here, but Findy's just playing for time and uh, playing it well. Conscript's going to get on top of middle VP. So I, I think ultimately, well, this game's going to end in one of two ways. Either a player is going to take a decisive engage on the field and break their opponent's uh, crucial units. Uh, like, if the IS-2 dies, I think that's super bad for Kusanagi. Although, we're kind of almost at the fuel where I could just replace it, but... Um, or this, all this game's going to come down to a, a victory point grind out. 
And uh, I kind of think of your Kusanagi. I sort of think you want to play for the victory point grind out, really. Well, I don't know. Trouble is, anytime you're giving the Axis player more time, that's always a risky proposition. So I... Yeah, I guess I respect going for this T-34, but... Because anytime you buy a T-34, you're basically... At least when you're buying a T-34 in this way, you're saying that you're going to try and end the game earlier rather than later. But I just don't think that that's going to be an option, so I think I prefer the SU-85, because that's a... When you buy an SU-85, that's a much more long-term investment, and it matures and becomes much better if a game goes on a lot longer, so... Oh my god, going for the third T-34. I mean, fair enough, in for a penny, in for a pound. Oh my goodness, this is looking a little bit desperate now. Gonna find the pack guns with the incendiary barrage. Oh no, this IS-2 is probably dead, actually. Incendiary comes down, but the pack guns will be just fine. Look at this well-disciplined crews just, like, maintaining their positions. Gonna get one of the pack guns, but yeah, I don't know. I don't think Kusanagi was this desperate. That was an overextension for me, I think. Oh no, loses the conscripts. I think this game's actually gonna be over, because now the Tiger Ace is gonna arrive, like, in a second, and that's gonna be, like, horrible. Okay, Kusanagi, oh man, Kusanagi's actually stacking some manpower here. I, uh, I, want, to, I, I want them to replace the conscripts, but I also want them to save for the IS-2, so... Uh, uh, how much manpower is an IS-2? Okay, yeah, get the IS-2 first, alright. Alright, but this infantry roster is dangerously depleted now. Alright, so here comes the next IS-2. So the, the third T-34 was cancelled. Nice rifle grenade, finding two squads of conscripts there. For a long part of time just now as well, Findeed was cut off, so there was only plus four fuel income, which means that this Tiger Ace has been delayed so much longer. It's still not here. It's, we're just about to have the resources line up where the Tiger Ace can come in, but my god, Kusanagi has made this an agonizing wait for Findeed. And now here comes the Tiger Ace. Just need that little bit more manpower. All right, here we go. Indeed, of course, cannot wait to be clicking on that button. And here comes the Tiger Ace. Okay, and now life, th this, is, this game just went into very difficult mode for the Soviet player. This is like maximum difficulty. Hurt me plenty, nightmare mode. Uh, this is gonna be so tough. I don't really know what you do. All right. All right, Kusanagi sees it. Whoa, this Tiger Ace is getting the flank here. What are we doing with the IS-2? It's not correctly rotated. Ah, okay, that's a nice move. I like the U-turn, nice. All right. So Tiger Ace has actually only arrived at one star now. That is interesting. This is, this is maybe the first Tiger Ace I've seen since I've returned to casting this year, so... I am not very familiar with it. Let's take a look here. So we get Spearhead. The Tiger Ace has faster turret rotation and longer side. Wow, so it's kind of got the ability like the um, King Tiger has. Interesting. Uh, vehicle crew repair. Holy spoons. Tiger Ace is a pretty good. And of course it comes... It, it's a Tiger with Blitzkrieg. It comes out with Blitzkrieg immediately. Oh my goodness. All right. Good unit. What are veterancy abilities? Uh, so it grants the spearhead ability. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, elite crews also fire with accuracy and range. Yep, so that's Tiger Ace. Okay, so it's veterancy ability is pretty similar to the regular Tiger. IS-2 gets discovered out here. King Tiger gonna fire in. Shot hits the wall. Wow, T-34 gets a penetrating hit there. Nice. Gets two penetrating hits. Damn, son. This T-34 is looking pretty, pretty prime. All right, now somehow, Findeed establishing a triple cap, which is exactly what they need to do. Conscripts here are gonna try and address that. And this Axis line, look, see, for the first time, the pack guns are able to take up position near the center of the map for the first time in a long time. This game has completely changed. A Maxim is getting added in. Ah, oh, Kusanagi, you're so clever. So, okay, recognizing that this game is likely to become about a grindy victory point fest now, Kusanagi investing in a Maxim to help control these victory points. Very smart. So smart. Yeah, another Maxim maybe? Double Maxim? I don't know. Feels, feels like it might be the right choice, but also... I don't know. I feel like you need an SU-85, because Ziskuns just are unlikely to cut it against a Tiger Ace. 
T-34 comes in at a brilliant angle here, forcing a lot of Axis units to retreat and have to uproot and fall back. Panzer IV going to try and cover this flank, but the IS-2 scoring some mighty hits into it. The range on the IS-2 is a little bit scary, isn't it? Oh, that uh, is a T-34 in jeopardy. Oh, in heavy jeopardy, Kusanagi, you need to respond. There we go. Going to start limping away with that one. These pack guns. Pack guns are so good. Brave conscripts here going to be trying to grab yet another point. Fire faster! <laughs> Fire faster! <laughs> uh, what a great game this has been. 35 minutes old. 118 tickets for the Axis player who has managed to stabilize into a Tiger late game. A well-supported Tiger late game with Panzer IV, with two pack gun, with quad vetted up LMG42 equipped Grenadiers. You know, with double Pioneer, with an MG42 that has been a beast all game. You know, SU85 getting added in here. Kusanagi also just making cerebral choices. Um, you don't get much higher play than this game, I've got to say. Have we... I mean, Kusanagi is overextended once or twice. But that is... They were such marginal calls. I, it's so hard to really say that... That they were, like, hard mistakes. I mean, the, the, the overextending like that was a mistake. Losing the shock troops and losing the first IS-2 in that way was a bit of a mistake. But apart from that, though, these two players have played almost flawlessly. Like, it's so good. It's so hard to play for this long. Fatigue will start setting in. Who knows? Maybe this is, like, a best of X series. Maybe they've had to play other series as today's, you know? Maintaining focus over long periods like this is something that you can only do with practice. It's so hard to do. little medium tank skirmish and look how disciplined they are with their unit with their unit deployment you know just the part panzer 4 and the t-34 happy to engage each other but notice on the minimap neither player pa panicking and routing other units to suck get sucked into that fight neither player and allowing their positions to become distorted by it. what is to be fair a minor skirmish between the two medium tanks out on the eastern flank you know that takes such discipline and decision making and skill to recognize that that's the right move to just Oh, okay, so Pack Gun here gets taken out by the IS-2. Flammenwerfer uh, engineers trying to get some work in here, but they're not going to be able to. The IS-2 using this building here, not not letting the Tiger Ace contribute to this fight. Going to roll forwards. So that's probably a mistake. Now the Pack Gun and the Tiger can see it. Really wants to get some hits on this Panzer IV, but I don't think it's worth it, bro. Uh, SU-85 is here, and that's going to help against this Tiger Ace. Needs to kite. Needs to kite. Oh, he's not reversing with the SU-85. Maxim here in a beautiful position going to be trying to keep back Axis infantry from accessing middle VP. The T-34 going to come in for a dive here, looking to get up on top of these pack guns, and it will. Now it's going to focus the Tiger tank. I don't know about this. I think you should have knocked out that pack gun first. Going to take a ram, but the ram gets intercepted. Ninja pack gun shot there, I think it was. And the table to just slowly turning against the Axis, sorry, the Soviet player. But heroic conscripts getting through. This is the story. Every time it looks like Findy takes a sweet fight, it's actually Kusanagi who's winning the game because they're getting gains elsewhere on the map. Now the IS-2 is super exposed though, desperately kiting. Aggressive Panzer IV coming in here. The gun is broken on the SU-85. Findy just going to rush in here. Oh no, this is a duck shoot. This is a duck shoot. Now all the Soviet armor is dead. Oh, yikes. Well, I mean, there's one T-34, but... Now the question is, can Findeed get onto the victory points before Major Kusanagi pushes him out of the game on victory points? Look at this overrun. Brutal. All right. The floodgates have opened. The Axis player no longer just stabilized, but dominant. And needs to just get any of the victory points. Pack guns, quickly capture this. We need to capture something. 50 tickets and counting. I, I, I reckon Findy will have the time to stabilize here. They need to really start stabilizing soon, though. Uh, conscripts here playing for time. As well they ought to. Okay, the pack guns are gonna... Uh, conscripts here gonna come and play for a bit more time. Kusanagi, you crazy ninja. Gets the pack gun squad. Insane. Insane. Now this gauge is filling back up. South gets, uh, or East, East victory point gets taken by uh, Findeed. That's going to stabilize the bleed rate to quite a large extent. Oh my god. This is such a grindy late game. This Panzer 2 is, uh, uh, sorry, Panzer 4 is utterly exhausted as well. T-34, no, wasting a shell into these Grenadiers. Horrendous. Oh, that's pivotal. Okay, now he sees the Panzer 4. 
Gonna do the old loop-de-loop -loop here to dodge the Tiger, but that's still gonna be a dead T-34 Pokemon. Is he gonna get the shot? He trades out for the Panzer IV. Yes! Oh my god, the Gundam gets destroyed on the on the Tiger Ace. What? What? Is there a pack gun anywhere? Oh no! No, this T-34 can't kill the Tiger Ace. Surely not. Where's the pack gun? Scramble, bro! Scramble! No, one penetrating hit I reckon will do it. Oh, the frontal armor is holding strong. This is a ridiculous game. What is this madness? Oh, the tiger gets away. No. All right, now the T-34 should be dead. There's just, there's, there's, there's got to be a, yeah, here we go. Faust infantry coming in. Insane. Absolutely insane. But Western VP has fallen into Axe's hands. And that's, that's crucial, because now Findeed's off the clock. 17 VPs remaining, but crucially, no Soviet army really remaining. Ziskun here putting down a desperation barrage to just try and deny Axis forces here. But I think this is game, because the Tiger Race survived. Um, and uh, even if the Tiger Race didn't survive... Oh, man. You've got to feel for Kusanagi. What a game they played. What a game. <laughs> But I just don't see how you're ever going to be able to take these last 17 tickets from Findeed. I mean, so, okay, obligatory me pointing out, Kusanagi has some time. 271 tickets is a lot more than zero. So, um, you know, but how do you ever, I mean, Kusanagi needs to rebuild everything. <laughs> like the, This is not a Soviet army here. So, yeah. I cannot believe that Tiger Ace. That was... How on earth did it manage to survive there? That heroic T-34. If that T-34 would have out, would have destroyed the Tiger Ace, that would have been one of the most memorable moments of Company of Heroes that I think I would have ever seen or casted. But this is the reality we live in. And Kusanagi, I mean, stubbornly not, 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 not leaving the game. Because... And this is another thing that I often say, you know, if you're playing for a thousand dollars, probably don't leave the game here. And again, yeah, this is not a zero percent to win. There's probably a universe in which Kusanagi is able to win this game. I can't imagine what it looks like. I can't imagine the series of events or the, or the sequence of plays that Kusanagi would need to make to take this game. We're seeing one T-34, two squads of conscripts, two squads of engineers take on a two-star Tiger race, a pack gun, two MG42s, two pioneers, four pretty elite grenadier squads with LMG42s, and a random assault grenadier squad. Like, this represents fearsome odds. Impossible odds. Almost impossible odds. And Kusanagi's ticket bank here, draining rapidly. Uh, I, I just don't even know how to approach this game for Kusanagi. I don't even know if it can be approached. Situation looking decidedly bleak here. This T-34 is probably about to get gibbed by a Tiger tank. And that really will be it, I think. I think if this T-34 goes down, I think you have the GG, really. Is this gun holding strong? Conscripts, no! Oh, no. Oh no, these conscripts. Okay, they're gonna be all right. Whew. Enemy forces are neutralizing a sector. Hmm. Findeed here, basically putting on a masterclass of Vermac play. Only two hundred points remain. I, all of the big fights involving most of the units from both of the players. I think Findeed has taken pretty much. I, I think, and to do that with Vermac at this level of play is very difficult uh and i just i feel like i haven't seen findeed make any big mistakes or even anything that i can really point to and say that was definitely a mistake like findeed just playing almost perfect vermact here i mean apart from pack guns and and an assault grenadier squad has findeed even really lost any units SU-85 is going to be coming here, but it's too little too late, and the T-34 will be dead, which is a, which is a problem here. Oh, he gets behind the line of sight blocker. Very cunning. All right. Maybe gets to live. Oh, God, this is so brutal. Fighting right on the doorstep of the base here. Rifle grenade. Not going to find anything. T-34 should die. Whoa, still alive. Ow. Okay, now it dies. There we go. 
I think the pack gun here getting the KO blow there. And this is desperate. I mean, this is worse than desperate. Kusanagi here, absolutely being the hero. Some Soviet units going to try and sneak out to the other side of the base. There are no Axis units here right now. Grenadiers are going to see this occur, but SU-85's on the field. That is the unit which can destroy the Tiger Ace. That is the one. I don't think anything else ever can in this game. So, all right. <laughs> Not getting off to the best first shot. Trouble with the SU-85s is they really need to be... Is it two-star they get the penetration increase? Yeah. They really need to be two-star to to dominate Tiger tanks. Like, they are effective against Tiger stars up to two stars, but it is really only once they get that second star of veterancy that they can dominate a Tiger tank. And <coughs> pardon me. And, of course, right now, with the Tiger tanks set up on the doorstep of Kusanagi's base... Yeah, that's the GG moment. Okay, then. What a game. What a game. Wow. I think both of those players just played almost perfectly. Kusanagi being absolutely heroic, but that IS-2, the first IS-2 being lost, was a bit of an overextension, and although Kusanagi had the resources in place to rapidly replace that, um, that IS-2, because you're forced to replace the IS-2, then Kusanagi couldn't be replacing or bolstering their infantry roster, and didn't have an SU-85 until a bit later, and, you know, the higher level of play in RTS, and most things, to be honest, but the higher the level of play, the smaller the deciding factors are in, in deciding victory. So at low level of play, you know, it's, it's usually massive things, like players make massive blunders, or they forget to macro, or it's just a, you know, it's, it's just things like that. But the, these high levels of play, overextending for a moment with your IS-2, and thereby delaying the the rate at which you can reinforce your infantry. Uh, I mean, by buying additional by buying additional squads, and also delaying your SU eighty five in a game that's going to go long against a tiger. I think that that is probably enough to lose the game at this high level of play. I have to commend Kusanagi for their decision making, their unit composition, the tactics, the micro they displayed with their tanks, except for that one overextension with the IS-2. Those T-34s, I don't think I've ever seen T-34s look so menacing against targets. They have no right to threaten. Um, just um, microing around this building just so well was Kusanagi. And also, like I say, Findeed basically taking all of the big fights that involved most of the units from both players, but every time, Kusanagi, after the fight, you're like, wow, Findeed took that one, nice fight, and then you look at the map and you're like, but it's Kusanagi who's winning because the whole map's gone red. Um, so, just a, a fantastic game, a privilege and a pleasure to have cast and caught that one in the wild. Beautiful stuff. Um, like I say, this is a, a World Championship Series game, so if you want to go and watch those VODs, head on over to the Twitch. I can't remember which Twitch they're on, but I mean, it'll be like Relics Twitch or Company of Heroes 2 Twitch, or certainly uh, I think Stormless and AE were casting them, so head on over to their Twitch. You can catch the best of the uh, best of the World Championship Series action there. Um, for me, uh, once again, I'm very sorry that this is the only video this week I've been able to upload. Life has been hectic um, AF recently. But I'm hoping in the week coming I'll be able to put some more time into the channel. Thank you very much for bearing with me. Thank you very much for choosing to spend some time on your Sunday evening watching on the channel. Really appreciate it. And this for now, Magpie842 signing out.